Hey guys, today I'm gonna share with you guys uh, my push to 6800 which is about top 400 here. Um, so the deck that I was using was um, this Royal Hawks Firecracker deck. Alright, so I'm gonna share with you guys some replays. Alright, so let's see the first one here against um, the Dreaded Sparky. So we're gonna see um, how we play this matchup. The key I think is um, to be able to Royal Hawks when his Sparky is in the back in the opposite lane. So when you don't have a punish, um, that is the biggest problem when his Sparky is gonna get uh, pretty good value. So at the start again, I was just uh, figuring out his deck. Uh, Royal Hawks first play is uh, pretty okay for me in this deck. So Royal Hawks and a Hill Spirit is pretty okay. So as you can see, we go Royal Hawks first just to figure out what he's playing. He defends with a mini Pekka and Zeb, so we'll just let all that play out. Um, over here I go with, the, because I look at my hand, and the best one I think it's this Dragons, uh, because there is a counter push value. So we go with the High Dragons, um, so we don't have to respond to that mini Pekka anymore. And then over here he has to respond with a Musketeer. So we cycle the Firecracker in the back to handle that. And now we can see he's about to go Sparky in the back, um, because this deck cycles really fast with two 1 Elixir cards, so we spam the one elixir cards and the opposite lane and then this time we make sure we go in with the royal hawks to create some form of pressure so this is key over here he chose to defend um so i go with the aggressive dragons early this is what i like to do against sparky to make sure that they get on the sparky asap so even if he blocks with a giant or goblin giant later on uh, we can always use delivery to kill the sparky the sparky has to die that is the biggest problem so over here we just use delivery to handle those dragons and then uh, it's pretty okay defense we can see and now we're not uh, we're not down too much, but we're up in tower damage. So again, we make sure we have our hawks when he decides to go sparky. So that is always important. So over here, basically, I'm um, just cycling and waiting for him to make his move. The bobs get a nice uh, hit on those towers, so now we're pretty okay. So again, I think we go with uh, we try to ignore that because we think that we're gonna be fine. But he goes with a nice hill spirit to catch our uh, skelly, so we have to respond with a one one hill spirit. Okay, so we go here with the Hawks. Um, I think he decides to ignore. So it's gonna be a two tower game here. He goes with Sparky in the back. Uh, we try to predict uh, to get the Sparky early. So I go with the Earthquake here. But then he knew what I was doing, so he immediately went in with the Goblin Giant. Um, yeah, I wanted to get my dragons on the Sparky, which is what I did earlier. The Sparky has to. The Sparky has to die. The Goblin Giant is not too much of a problem. So here we go with um, Skellies and our delivery. So we just make sure we kill the Sparky. Um, everything else we can take because we can defend pretty easily the rest of the stuff. The only thing is the Sparky has to die. Okay, so over here um, basically it's a two tower game so we're just gonna speed it up. Uh, so the key always uh, I think against Sparky is to always get your dragons early on the Sparky to make sure that your delivery can always just handle it. And then uh, make sure that you have Royal Hawks or you could cycle to Royal Hawks when he decides to Sparky in the back. That is my key advice that I will give you guys if you are meeting a Sparky deck, alright? And then I will see you guys in the next game. Okay, the next game that I'm gonna share with you guys is against the Dreaded Ice Bowl, alright? So let's see how I approach this matchup. So I would say the key against Ice Bowl is to try to survive to double elixir. Because once in double elixir, you can always cycle your earthquakes uh, pretty quickly. So we're gonna just um, fast forward a bit here. Okay, basically, yeah, at the start we're just cycling and figuring out what the opponent is playing. So he goes with that. Um, so we go with the Hawks because there is no way he can handle that firecracker. So we see he goes with the Ice with Nato to get the activation on the King, but we still get a good amount of damage. So we took like a thousand damage off the start, and he still plays a Knight. So I go with the Dragons. I like to go Dragons on the ground units because um, then he has to respond to those Dragons. So he goes with um, the Tesla over there. We decide to go with the Earthquake just because we are kind of up in Elixir and we can still defend. Because against Ice Bowl, he has, um, he has Rocket and not Fireball compared to 2.9. So it's not easy for him to go Ice Bowl Rocket um, against your Hawks or your Bubs at the start. So basically against um, Ice Bowl, I like, to go, um, I like to cycle my Bubs in the back just as a split lane kind of thing. Okay, so again here we go um, aggressive because he doesn't have Tesla. So we do um, quite a bit of damage too. And then we're still up in Elixir. Alright, so again, we're just trying to survive to double to make sure that uh, we don't take too much expo damage. So as long as you get to double, fine, um, you're gonna be okay. I think um, my deck has a slight matchup. Um, based on API, I think it's a 60-40 matchup. So over here, it's a 4 for 4 trade. So if you don't want to do anything, um, you can just let the dragons go. If you want, you could Earthquake, but that's a, a, tad, a tad aggressive. So I think I decide to let it go. And then uh, we cycle Firecracker in the back. 
Firecracker can be irritating for him to deal with, so get a little bit of chip here and there if you can. Um, as you can see, as I said earlier, we're cycling barbs in the back. We're not too worried if he goes x he decides to rocket those barbs, because we can go all in on the other lane. So you can see the Firecracker getting uh, pretty much a good amount of value. And then he goes, once he goes with the log, uh, I like to go with the uh, Hawks and Hill Spirit, alright? So usually the, the Hill Spirit and the Firecracker would go opposite lanes, because I don't want to give him log value. So over here, we go with the aggressive earthquake and then we do quite a nice amount of damage. Again, uh, we're still trying to survive because one one missed time um, defense, uh, we're gonna get an expo log. So we can see he goes with the defensive expo this time, so we go hawks into that expo. So the key is also to make sure that you clear those expos because if you let him stack up um, two expos, it could be a problem. Of course you can earthquake them. Um, you can also earthquake because you have a 2-1 elixir cycle. So you gotta also go all in. Um, the other thing, yeah, go all in when he goes with the rocket, especially when he goes with a naked rocket. Because I cycle fast, so I'm not too bothered about him um, doing expos. Yeah, so we can use earthquake, and then we can split. Um, we can split our barbs, or we can go with the hogs, and then we're back with another earthquake. So as you can see, we take a bit of an expo log, but we we get the earthquake damage. So basically, he knows that um, the expo is very unlikely to get a connection, so we're just waiting for him to go with the rocket cycle. So also key, um, don't even give him a firecracker for the rocket. So we, yeah, we try to go with a bit of chip. Um, he, will, he will rocket uh, firecrackers, so that is key, don't, don't give them firecrackers. So again, we split um, here, and now we go with the earthquake cycle. So we're pretty okay. And now we're just um, splitting hawks to make sure we take out the expo. Again, um, gotta be careful of the NATO. So we can see, I think in the next expo again, he goes, he tries he tries to NATO the barbs out of the expo range. So you gotta be very careful with those barbs. But uh, I think when we put it in the middle, because there are five barbs, it's not that easy to NATO them out of the cycle. Out of the expo range, I mean. So again, we go with the uh, defensive earthquake here. So he knows he can't break through, he spends everything there, so we decide to go all in on the opposite lane. So that is how I, I won this matchup. Um, but in general, again, some expo, whether it's 2.9 or 3.5 ice bowl, the key is always to try to survive to double elixir. Alright, and then I'll see you guys in the next game. Alright, so the last video that I'm gonna share is how we handle um, gold and lightning matchup. So I think this is a good matchup for the Royal Hawks, especially when they can't really deal with the firecracker, right? So I think you can see throughout this game, uh, we're just trying to cycle as many firecrackers as we can. Because that's, um, that's the one thing that's going to handle the Night Witch, because you don't have poison, right? So that's um, something you got to take note of. Make sure you have Firecracker in the lane that his Golem Night Witch is going. So um, Fire Firecracker first play is okay, as well as um, going Royal Hawks, um, Hill Spirit. So that that's uh, the kind of plays that I like to do. You can also cycle Skellies and Hill Spirit if you like. So these are the cards that can be cycled. Splitting, um, splitting your dragons in the middle is pretty okay too. Right, so we can see that um, he already played as Ice Wiz, um, so most probably expecting a NATO. So once we see the Dragon, we'll most probably know it's Golem, right? So again, uh, basically just cycling, because if I go Hawks now, we have the Heal Spirit. Okay, so now we know he's playing a very defensive deck with the Cage. That is the, that is the biggest problem, right? The Cage. Because he has Cage, he has Ice Wiz, he has NATO, he has Dragons, and all these are pretty good defense against our Royal Hawks. So we're gonna respawn over here. Um, as I said, we always want the Firecracker against the Night Witch. That is the thing that he cannot handle in this deck. He's gotta have to NATO those, fire, those Firecrackers. So that's your best bet, to make sure you abuse your Firecrackers in this kind of matchups. Um, it's gonna be easier in Double Elixir, you will see later on. Right, so again, we're just basically cycling and uh, waiting for him to make his move. Because, he, as you can see, um, he can handle. He, he's gonna handle our defense pretty okay, look at that. Um, Cage and the Dragons, um, the Splash is way too much. And then he's he's gonna get a he can easily get his um, king tower activated too. Okay, so firecrackers can handle those dragons. He goes with the nado. Um, that was kind of a waste because we didn't take any damage too. Okay, so now we're still pretty even, and it's almost double elixir. So it might seem like it's uh, good for the golem, right? Because golem's gonna shine in double elixir, but that's where we can also exploit um, our cycle because we cycle really fast um, compared to the golem. So that's when I, I will stack up all my firecrackers. So again, uh, yeah, we're predicting he might golem in front, so we have to uh, we have to give some form of pressure so that he cannot golem up. Okay, so he goes with the late cage. Um, he barely takes uh, a few shots. So firecracker is gonna handle the night witch together with the skeleton dragon. 
And then now he doesn't have cage, but he still has NATO and all those dragons. So we gotta be very careful with the hawks. But at the same time, we know we have to pressure. Because if we don't pressure, um, he's gonna be able to goal him out. So he decides um, to, to defend. He's gonna over defend with the ice with his barrel. And then he has a night witch, right? So you see. You can see that he's really patient. Um, he's not gonna go them up there. So again, we're just um, stacking up our defenses. Okay, so we, we took the earthquake on that because uh, we know we needed. We felt like we needed a bit of chip here and there. So again, uh, we go in with the hawks on the opposite lane because the dragons are actually pretty good against those hawks. So you gotta be really careful about going the hawks into those dragons. So we can see um, Firecracker stays alive and is on, on our side of the arena, helping up the left side. Uh, we go again with the Earthquake cycle, and then this is where we cycle out our Hawks, because we have Dragons on the counter push. Firecracker still stays alive, going from the right lane to the left lane, and then we already have our second Firecracker on the field. So that's when we do um, quite a bit of damage. The Firecracker is still alive, and then we cycle our Dragons, and then we keep it alive with the Hill Spirit, and then... Look at that, uh, we have firecrackers both left and right, okay. Unfortunately they die, but that's the key, um, I think, against matchups when they don't have arrows. Make sure you abuse your firecrackers, and make sure you cycle those one elixir cards. Cycle the quick cycle cards, and make sure that you have... Keep attacking with the hawks, as well as keep abusing your firecrackers. So, see, firecracker still stays alive on the right, and we're gonna be able to defend this. I think he golems up eventually um, towards the end, but you look at that, the firecracker on the left and right is pretty irritating for him to deal with. Okay, so yeah, we have always make sure we have firecracker. And then now, when he golems up, we have to attack opposite lane to apply some form of pressure so that he cannot have um, the push that he wants. Because if we just defend, he's gonna have like his dragons, his nado, his lightning and everything. So over here, we just go with the bobs because he has lightning, so bobs are pretty good. He goes with the NATO, but we have um, delivery, so that handles everything too. And we can see firecrackers are uh, being stacked up again. So we're basically cycling all our troops, and now his uh, both towers are pretty low. So we're just gonna go with the split hawks here. He goes with the lightning to take out the firecrackers, but now we're pretty good. Um, 20 seconds left. We're, we're going really patient in this game. Of course, we can try to go all in and attack pretty easily, but. I think that the key is to be patient, alright, so I think he finally gives up because we had way too many uh, pressure on the left and right. So that's how I approach um, Golem matchups when they don't have arrows, so try to abuse your firecracker. Alright, so I hope you guys um, like the series with my push with this Royal Hawks, I've been using it for the last week and I think it's uh, really helping me, sticking with one deck on ladder. So I hope you guys also learn a, a thing or two, if there are any comments, uh, please let me know in the comments below and I hope to see you guys in the next video, alright, peace out.